I've seen so many stories like this after Charlottesville, all, all kinds of different things where people take their own life or horrible things happen. And uh, it just serves to remind you that uh, the, the press is the enemy of the people. These are our enemies. These are not good people. These are not like our compatriots, but we just happen to disagree. These people are scum. You know, you look at the people that are spreading this kind of stuff in the cities, in the schools, all over the country. These are bad people. These are terrible people. And we have to start treating them like that. They treat us like that. You know, notice in all these community guidelines, while we're on the subject, on YouTube and on any platform, they will protect against hatred for everything except for Christianity, whiteness, and right-wing political views. Everything else is protected. If you're short, dumb, ugly, retarded, if you're in a wheelchair, if you're black, if you're Muslim, Jewish, if you're Jewish, if you're a Zionist, if you're Jewish, if you're in a wheelchair, if you're Jewish, it's all protected. But you know what's not protected? Christianity. Not protected. And, you know, I'm not telling you anything groundbreaking here. But it does go to show that But they see us as fair game. And that is the vitriol that they use against us. You know, they don't treat us like we treat them. We treat them like, well, we're all the same, but we just disagree. Come on, brother, let's unite. I love you. I want to make America great again with everybody. But they don't see it like that. If you're even like Christian, they'll call you Nazi scum, you should be doxxed, you should be hung from a lamp. That's what they say to people. That's what they say to us. That's what they say to me. I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a hater. I'm a good guy. I am a nice guy, okay? All right? I'm a cool guy. Ask anybody, ask any of my friends. I'm pretty nice, all right? I'm a cool guy. I'm a nice enough guy. But they will say, Nazi scum, we'll hang you from a lamppost. You should be doxxed. You know, horrible, nasty things. And you know what? We're not saying that about them because, oh, well, we just have to because they're saying that about us, golden rule style, but it's because these people are actually in the wrong. They're going out there uncontested in mainstream media saying, the worst thing you could be is a racist, and they're all racist. Well, how about this? The worst thing you can be is a pedophile, and that's what they're all enabling. And these people should be put in jail, and there should be a death penalty for abusing children like that. How about that, right? Because all day long, we hear in the national news media, we've allowed them to set the moral standard that the worst thing you could be is intolerant. The worst thing you could be is um, not nice, insensitive, right? That, that's what they tell us. That is what they've programmed us all to believe. <gasps> He's a racist. He's a Nazi. You know, that's the basis. That's the first principle is everything's okay as long as you don't have, like, prejudice. I'm sorry, but that's not my moral compass. My moral compass says that if you insult God and you oppose nature and you abuse children, these are the worst things. These are people that kill babies. They don't just say they're pro-choice. They say they're pro-abortion. You know, it used to be the argument was, well, it's, it's all, if you're in a bad situation, like it's better if a doctor does it than in an alley. That's not what they're saying anymore. Not like that's, you know, a good thing, but that's not even what they're saying anymore. Now they're saying, get many abortions, get as many abortions as you want. People literally kill babies. You know, and, and even 10 years ago, the argument used to be two consenting adults just want to get married. Who cares what they're doing in the privacy of their own bedrooms? It's not in the bedroom anymore. It's not confined to the bedroom anymore. Maybe I'd be okay with that, but that's not what's... And I don't, I'm not, but, you know, maybe you could argue that at the bare minimum, but that's not what's happening. It's not in the privacy of people's bedrooms. It's not consenting adults. It's children now. It's children being exposed to this every day in school, in library, on bus stops, in advertisements, billboards, TV, movies. It's in Marvel movies, Star Wars movies. People that are corrupting children. People that are taking children and telling them that it is normal and okay to look at pornography, to be in deviant sexual relationships, things that will land them in hell. I'm sorry, but that's the worst thing you can be. And you're a, you're a bad person if you believe that. You're the worst kind of person. And I don't want to talk to you. And I think you should be fired from your job for that. And I think you should be put in jail for that if you want to know the truth. I think all these people peddling all this stuff should be put in jail. I think all that stuff should be illegal. You know, pornography has been in the news lately because of that letter that was drafted by Jim Banks and a few other Congress people. Let's talk about pornography. You've got people that make money off of trapping children, making them addicted 
to masturbating to deviant sexual acts on the internet. They make money off of that. You've got people with mansions that have addresses, by the way, millionaires, multi, multi millionaires, because they have built algorithms, algorithms that will lure in and trap children into watching lewd sexual acts manipulating how their brain works. People are millionaires off of this. And people are concerned because what? Roseanne Barr said that, uh, what's your name is a monkey, right? Because somebody said the N word one time, I'm sorry. But at a certain point, we as a society must say that uh, killing babies, getting children addicted to pornography, chemically castrating children, landing people in hell, eliminating people's chances at salvation, insulting God is worse than being insensitive. It's time to say that. You're a worse person if you're in favor of killing babies. You're a bad person if you vote for people like that than uh, if you're insensitive, right? Then if you're like less than totally inclusive or tolerant. That has to be the new moral standard. That's the winning issue. That's how you turn it all around. But you only turn it around if you reject the whole framework that has been constructed by the left. We've been playing their game for too long where we say being racist is the worst thing you can be and I'm not a racist. You call me that, but I reject your accusation. We have to reject the whole framework. I don't care about being called racist. I don't care about those names. I don't care about being called whatever because there are millions of babies being aborted. I don't care about that because millions of people are on drugs because they're depressed because their parents are divorced and they're addicted to pornography, right? That, that to me, it keeps me awake at night. That to me is offensive, you know? So call me whatever you want, but that is the only way that we can win is by completely reversing and making the case, making a compelling, assertive case for our worldview from our worldview and not from theirs. So I see this drag queen story hour stuff. I, I see this, a young man who I think actually was homosexual even, but he even, as a homosexual saw that this was wrong, who took his own life because the media did all this stuff and it just goes to show who we're dealing with and what the message has to be. The minute that we start participating in this war, we will win it. We have to first realize that it's a war, you know, that it's not a team sport where, you know, we're all on the same team and we're all in this together and, you know, we're all going to hold hands and sing Kumbaya. The minute we reject that idea and we realize that you've got two irreconcilable factions in the country of people that are okay with everything I've just listed and people that are not until you realize that these two, excuse me, these two factions are irreconcilable, that there will be no compromise and that they hold mutually exclusive positions. You realize that that is a definition of a war. That is a definition of a conflict because you cannot have no abortion in the country and abortion in the country. You cannot have no deviancy being promoted and deviancy being promoted. You know, in other words, you have to, that we have reached a fork in the road and you must go in one direction and everybody has to go along with it. There's no middle path. There's no compromise. You know, you have to choose at a certain point, what kind of society you want to live in. And some people want to go one way and some people got to want to go the other way. But one thing's clear, everybody's going to go wherever we choose to go. The other side will be subdued and dominated with the use of force. We're seeing that. Eventually it's laws, it's gun to your head, you are going to support this. You know, that's what we're talking about. That is not everybody coming together and finding, you know, some kind of common thing and we're all we're all bleeding red, white and blue. That is at a certain point, the liberal elite will hold a gun to your head and say, this is going to be the society and you're going to like it and you're going to participate in it and you're going to be okay with it and you're going to talk like this and you're going to act like this and you're not going to question it and so on. And the minute we realize that that's a paradigm, we're going to pull out our gun, you know, met metaphorically, metaphorically, rhetorically, it's symbolizing, you know, p politics, symbolizing like, assertive rhetoric, assertive policy making. We're going to pull out our piece and we're going to say, no, bitch, you're coming with us. Excuse me. No, we're going back. We're going back, back before the French Revolution. And you're coming with us. You're going to be okay with it. Metaphorically, metaphorically speaking, you know, not advocating for violence, disavow, you know, any violent actions, any, you know, real weapons being wheeled. And I, I'm talking about the pen. I'm talking about words, ideas. I'm an ideas kind of a guy. But the minute, in other words, but the minute that we realize that it is a conflict and one try to, trying to subdue the other, and we start acting like it, 
We can turn the whole ship around. We can. We really can. I do believe that. So there's a white pill in this. There's a white pill in the fact that they have overplayed their hand and they've created an opportunity for us to go in. We just have to have the balls. We have to have the guts. We have to be smart. We have to have the brains to capitalize, take advantage, and, uh, and win. I think we can win. But that is what happened in Brisbane. Very, very tragic. We're pressing F for uh, Wilson Gavin. And hopefully we see more stuff like this. But 